Considering the ceaseless, buzzing, confusing sea of colors, shapes, and sizes of the objects surrounding us, it is a miracle that our mind is so good at keeping them all straight. It has been known for some time that our mind seeks patterns and order, and when it does not see them, it imposes an order of its own onto the mass of things around us. This is very valuable when we are at the store, for example, where we need to choose the right product for the right recipe. However, the patterns of our choices are not capricious. They come out of certain principles for organizing the world, which might very well be hardwired. There are different ways to identify and call these principles. We will use one of the most intuitive, unceremoniously yet memorably called CRAP. Mind you, there is nothing scatological about CRAP. This is an acronym, and the letters stand for Contrast, Repetition, Alignment, and Proximity. The principles are derived from perception psychology, and are usually employed in design, but they reflect universal human needs. As usual, let me explain through a story how CRAP works. Right after World War II, there was a general store in Greencastle, Indiana right across the street from the famous Nazi V-1 bomb, which serves as a memorial of the local participation in World War II. Mr. Hoffman, the proprietor and a veteran of the war, opened the store in 1946, right after his discharge from the military. In those years, the labor market was very tight, and he went through employees at quite a fast pace, given the low wages and the greater opportunities that were opening up in the Midwest for his target employees, mostly younger men. To speed up the training, especially when it came to restocking the shelves, he would recite them the mantra he learned as a younger man working for a larger department store. There's nothing, young man, that sticks things together like crap. Pay attention, he would say, pointing to the shelves with a short, stubby, Fat finger, stacked 10 feet high and divided into as many columns by vertical inner walls. Contrast. We want our customers to discover new things. Thus, we always shelf the merchandise one shelf column at a time. And no column should carry items that are too closely related. If one column has, let's say, flour and oil, the other should stock salami and cheese. If in one we display fabric and millinery, the other should have shoes. But aren't flour and oil, foods and fabric and millinery wearables? asked the shop boy. Indeed they are, but you see, contrast should be used with care. Too little and you bore the customer, too much and you confuse her. Second, continued the shopkeeper unabated, how much space is there between the products and the shelf above it? About the pond's width, sir, said the boy. True, said Mr. Hoffman. And all merchandise allows as much space. Alignment ensures that our eye moves across the shelves unhindered and that we keep things straight in our mind. Now, third and most important, said Mr. Hoffman, taking an imposing pose. Come closer, come. Mr. Hoffman asked the shop assistant to stand straight in front of the shelves looking ahead. What do you see? asked Mr. Hoffman. The fourth shelf from the top, sir. No, son. That here is what we call the eye level shelf or the money printing machine. That's where we repeat across the columns the merchandise with the highest margin. That is not the highest priced or the highest quality stuff. It is the stuff that makes us money. Repetition is the mother of all wealth, decreed Mr. Hoffman. Then he moved toward the entrance of the store and approached the old Indian chief statue advertising the finest cigars in central Indiana. Now, son, the last letter in crap is... P, sir? Right, that stands for proximity. The more in the way a thing is, the more important. Take a look at this old chief here, said Mr. Hoffman, knocking on the wood of a life-size statue of a Native American chief holding a pipe. It is my true money maker. We make more money from selling cigars and cigarettes than from any other item. Thus, he is at the door, right in the way of the visitors, and next to the cigar cabinet, which blocks the way on purpose. So, remember, just like Mr. Hoffman, when you visualize your data, 
contrast values and examples. To avoid boring the viewers, repeat values that are the same in significance and value. Align them to keep the attention focused and put important messages as close to the people as possible.